Hi guys, welcome to the last one of our video series about uh, electric and magnetic fields. Um, today we're going to be having a look at the interaction of uh, currents when they're in a magnetic field and to um, look at being able to calculate the magnetic field strength. Um, so we've had a look at how to calculate the electric field strength and basically we'll go through a new formula that helps us calculate magnetic field strength. Now, um, we've had a look at the interactions between different um, types of magnets in class and the field lines associated with them. So this should be a bit of um, a revision about that. So if we have a look at these two bar magnets here, um, we had a look at the fact that um, unlike poles attract, and you can see that the field lines go from one to the other, um, just like they would if they were drawing charges, uh, unlike charges, and just like charges again, that like charges, or in this case like poles, poles actually repel each other and you can see that from the interaction of the field lines there so they don't actually cross over um, they push away from each other. So if we um, now introduce a wire or a current carrying wire into these fields we can have a look at what actually happens. So um, basically we have a current carrying wire and an external magnetic field. So the wire is going through the middle um, and then you've got the field around the outside, so it's external. Now um, the picture in the middle, we've got no current no current going through that wire, but you can see this little dot there, that's our wire. Um, it's going perpendicular to the, the field, um, the magnetic field going between those two unlike poles. Now, if we were to switch on um, the, the current flowing through that wire, what would happen is um, we start to get a flow of, of moving charges. And we know that moving charges actually create their own magnetic field. Um, and what actually happens is the magnetic field that's going through the wire because of the moving charges starts to interact with the external field um, that's between the two, the two magnets um, in this diagram. And as a result, we have an interaction between these two magnetic fields um, and a force actually starts to act because of the interaction of the, the two um, magnetic fields and what we have is a, um, a resultant force being acting on the wire which actually moves the wire. Um, so that's what we're seeing in that second picture over here. So here um, we can see that the two fields have started interacting and as a result we're getting a force moving the wire uh, out to the side over here. Now, um, here we go, this is just what I was talking about. So when the magnetic um, well, when the current flows through the wire, we get it gets its own magnetic field happening. And because we know that lines of magnetic force can't cross, um, we have to we, we get some distortion happening. Um, and as a result, we get the interaction of the fields. Um, and to well, the force pushes uh, on the wire. So there's a force acting on it. Now, if we were to reverse the polarity of the magnets, um, then the force would be reversed. It would go in the opposite direction. And also, if we were to switch um, the current, so if we were to reverse the current flowing through that wire, then the same thing would happen. The, the force would actually be going in the opposite direction. Um, but there is a way that we can determine the direction of the force really quite easily uh, and that is where we introduce our next physics gangster sign which is very cool it is called the right hand palm rule so for all my lefties please make sure that you use your right hand uh, and not your left hand and for all my righties it's the hand that you write with so you have to put down your pen and make sure that you're using the right hand to figure these out now um, the right hand rule is basically saying that your thumb uh, goes in the direction of the current, or I. Um, your fingers, um, they go in the direction of the magnetic field. So if your uh, arrows of your magnetic field are pointing up, your fingers will point up, and vice versa if it's down. And the resultant force that's going to act on that moving current, or the, the wire, will be your palm. Uh, so Basically, if you had an arrow shooting out the middle of your palm, then that would be the direction of the force. So towards the camera, um, if it was facing the other way, it would be towards me. So let's see what it actually looks like. Um, if we go back to this example here, all right, if we have our um, north-south 
magnet so it's going to go from north to south then the field is going to be going that way and if we have our current going into the page let's try and do it the other way there we go the current's going into the page you know backwards because my um, camera but basically it's reversed because of the way I'm looking at it but if the going into the page then it's going to be going to my right which is actually your left but if you flip me around it would be to the right which is the way that the um, the picture is moving so we'll have a go at that a few more times uh, as we go through but remember magnetic field fingers current thumb resultant force out from your palm um, one of the important things to note is that if we have um, any uh, wire with a current going through it in a magnetic field the maximum force is going to be felt if that wire is perpendicular um, to the field okay so that would be all of the force of the fields interacting would be felt now if the um, the wire is in the same direction or um, parallel to the magnetic field then we're going to get a force of zero okay there's going to be no external force being able to be felt on that wire so it's really important to note so um, force is zero if it's parallel force is maximum if it's perpendicular or at 90 degrees um, if it's some angle in between then you're going to get some part of the force which we'll talk about in a moment so here we go. So the magnetic force on a current carrying conductor is at maximum if it's perpendicular to the magnetic field and it's at zero when the magnetic field is parallel. Um, it's of an intermediate value if the current is at some angle in between. Now, current elements. Um, current element is a fancy word that describes um, a small portion of the wire that's actually inside the magnetic field and that has some current traveling through it. So basically we can determine the current element by um, the current, like the amount of current that's flowing and the amount of wire. So basically current is measured in amps, um, the length of wire is measured in meters, and so we get um, this unit of um, amps per meter for a current element. Now, it comes in handy when we have a current element when we're looking for our magnetic field strength vector. So this is how we tell what strength of the magnetic field is we're looking at. Um, the formula that we're going to be looking at is B, which is the magnetic field strength. Um, and we look at the force that is being exerted divided by uh, that current element. So how much wire is in the field and how much current is actually traveling through that wire. So we can see that um, the field strength is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to how much wire and how much current is going to be traveling through that um, the, the current element. So we can find the direction of it really easily by applying our right hand palm rule. All right, so field direction, uh, current and force is your palm. All right, so the units of B or field strength for magnetic fields is going to be measured in a unit called Tesla. Now Tesla is basically um, a Newton per amp per meter um, and so instead of having to write N A minus 1 M minus 1 we just write a T for Tesla. Um, yeah. So now this rule is um, for a current that's perpendicular to the magnetic field so all of the force is going to be felt so we've got um, the field lines are going to be perpendicular or at right angles to our wire that's traveling through there um, we can rearrange it to find force all right we're going to get the formula f is equal to i delta l delta l is just the amount of wire and b is our um, our field strength vector measured in tesla's Now this is the situation I mentioned before when it might be at some angle um, and therefore it's going to impact how much force is going to be felt in that wire. Now um, what we can say here is um, 
Basically, we can resolve our current element into its components, so a vertical component and a horizontal component. Um, because the component that's parallel with the field is going to have no force, then it's only going to be the component perpendicular that has force. So if we see here, if we break um, this guy down into a vertical component and a horizontal component, this one is going to be perpendicular, uh, sorry, sorry, um, uh, parallel to the field, so it's not going to have any force component. It's only the part that is going to be here, um, which is, is par um, perpendicular to the field, that's actually going to have any impact of force felt. So we can actually um, determine that by adding it into our formula and working out what sign of this angle is going to be. And that will tell us which component um, of our wire is going to be in that perpendicular plane and how much force is going to be felt because of it. So we just change our formula really easily by going it's now F is equal to I delta LB like it was before, but we just multiply it by sine theta to actually figure out that um, the vertical component that's perpendicular to our field. Um, the direction is still found by applying our palm, our right hand palm rule, um, but it's only applied to the component that's perpendicular. So if I was to work out this question here, um, then the field, let me go backwards, is going to be going this way. Um, our perpendicular part of the current is going to be going this way, and then we would get the field lines coming out of, the, my force would be coming out of the page. Uh, for that particular question. Um, here is an example, and what we might actually do is I will do this as a work example um, and we'll go through it together. So stand by. Okay, so here we have an example um, of how to calculate uh, magnetic field strength. So basically the question is saying a wire carries a current of 3 amps at right angles, so uh, perpendicular, um, to the uniform magnetic field strength of 2 Tesla, as in this diagram over here. Now um, the first part of the question is saying we have to calculate the magnetic force per unit length of wire acting on the wire. Now, the first thing we have to do is to write down our formula that we now know for um, force and field strength. So, we've got force um, is equal to I uh, delta L times B. Alright, so this first question is asking us, um, what is the force per unit length of wire? So, force per unit length of wire. Um, now, if we do if we do that, all we have left on the other side is our don't worry about that our I times B. All right. So once we have that, we can just work that out. So our I in the question is three, uh, and our um, field strength is two Tesla. So our force per unit length of wire is going to be six. Um, and it's going to be newtons per meter. Easy peasy. Uh, the second part of the question is actually asking us, okay, so the magnetic force on the wire is going to, uh, what is it going to be if there's going to be 20 centimeters of wire in the field? So I was wanting to know the magnetic force. So the force, um, and again, our formula is force is equal to I uh, delta L times B. And they're telling us that there's going to be 20 centimeters of wire uh, in the um, in the field. Now, in our first question, we actually worked out that force over delta L was equal to six uh, newtons per meter squared. Uh, sorry, newtons per meter. So what we can do to get force by itself is we can move that delta L across to the other side. And we can rearrange for force. So force is going to be equal to 6 times uh, our delta L, which is going to be 20 centimeters. So it's going to be 0 0.2 meters. Remember SI units, um, which is going to end up being 1.2 newtons of force. Now, the way we can work this out for number 3, which is the direction, 
is our right hand uh, palm rule. So the first thing we need to do is point our fingers to the right um, because that's the way that the field lines are going. We need to point our thumb straight up the middle of the page and basically have a look at where the arrow, that arrow coming straight out of our palm would be going. And in this case, if we've done it right, we should have our palm facing the page. So the force is going to be uh, into the page um, if we use our right hand palm rule. And that's our question finished. Um, when it gets a little bit more complicated, when we have to work out um, which component of the wire is going to be perpendicular um, and work out you know, which fraction uh, basically is going to be um, experiencing the force, it gets a little bit more complicated and we have to use the second version of our formula. So basically this question is saying a current, um, a wire carrying a current of 6.8 amps is placed into a uniform magnetic field. The strength of the field is 0.4 tesla and the angle is 140 degrees to the field, um, exactly like it's in the diagram over here. Now we have to find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. So the other version of our formula was that force is equal to I delta L B and then we have times sine theta and that'll actually work out uh, which component is going perpendicular to our field um, and that's really all that matters because the component that would be going straight up here is actually not going to have any force because it's in the same plane so the only one that's going to matter is this one which is why it's sine theta so if we then plug in all of the values we know, we know that the current is going to be 6.8. We know the length of wire um, is 0.5 meters, 0.5. We know the strength of the field is 0.4 tesla. And we know the angle, so it's going to be times sine of 140 degrees. Now if we plug all of that in, we should get an answer of 0.8. 874 newtons as our force and the way we figure out um, which uh, direction first of all we have to point our fingers down the page um, for the, the, the force the magnetic force lines and then we have to point our thumb going across to the left of the page because that's the component that we're looking for of the um, the current and then we'll see that our, our our palm should be facing us or coming out of the page so if we wanted to have that as our magnitude we could then have our direction as out of the page and that's as complicated as these questions get um, so hopefully that will make sense and we'll have a bit more of a practice in our lesson we'll see you then